All right, folks, let's get back to school here. It's all time to get back to school. Today's lesson is going to be the mathematics of software defined radio. And as usual, we will start off with an example. So let's just say we got three radio stations here. You tuned your SDR radio to a thousand kilohertz, and we got about a hundred kilohertz span. And we're picking up three radio stations. A radio station at a thousand kilohertz, another guy at 990 kilohertz, and another guy at uh, 1020. Now, that's all well and good, but what's really coming into your radio, remember you tuned your radio to a thousand kilohertz, so what's really coming into your SDR is the first station is at zero, or DC, this guy is at minus 10 kilohertz, and this other guy is at 20 kilohertz. So, this is what the frequencies your SDR is really picking up. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what the heck is this guy talking about? And uh, you might think I'm crazy, but the answer is this is what's coming into your radio. So all your little uh, RTLs, HackRF, SDR, AirSpy, this is the architecture that those little El Cheapo radios have. They're basically called a zero IF receiver. You got your antenna, comes into the LNA, gets split two to one here, and goes into what's called a IQ demodulator. Basically just two mixers, a frequency oscillator, and it splits it up into a zero phase and a 90 degree signal. So like I said, we tuned our radio to a thousand kilohertz, goes into these two low pass filters, A to D, and here we break it up into the uh, I and Q. This block here is a decimation block. So more importantly, let's get into how I got those frequencies. Like I said, we tuned our radio station to a thousand kilohertz. So the thousand kilohertz station is going to be DC, the 1020 guy is going to be 20 kilohertz, and the 990 station is going to be minus 10 kilohertz. So hopefully you guys can see that. And again, this is the block diagram of a SDR receiver. And this is the in phase and quadrature signals that get processed to your software. So this is what the software is processing at the end of the day. These two signals. And this is how it got those two IQ signals uh, from the air. It picked the radio wave, amplified it, and turned it into what's called baseband IQ signals. I'm not going to get into the details of this. This is all very Googleable, and uh, you can study it for yourselves. But the example here is we're again tuning our SDR radio to a thousand kilohertz and I want to show how those three AM radio stations in terms of the SDR are showing up at DC 20 kilohertz and minus 10 kilohertz. Alright, here we go. Time for the math. Oh boy. So if we look and write the equations, the equations that's going into your uh, SDR software program here, this is the equation right here of the IQ data that's streaming into your SDR software. You got A1 multiplied by this 10 kilohertz complex phaser, negative 10. You got A2, remember he's at DC, so his guy here is uh, zero. And then you got um, A3, and he's multiplied by the 20 kilohertz phaser. And these A terms are just showing you um, 
there are three amplitude modulated signals, so that's these terms here. We'll go ahead and assume 80% modulation, why not? But the takeaway are these, is this equation up here. So this equation up here is what's called baseband IQ. So if you look at my other videos and you see three radio stations coming out, this is the equation I'm making to do that. That's how I'm doing three radio stations. Basically making this baseband IQ data, then sending it into an IQ modulator, off it goes into the RF world. All right, so hopefully you guys got that. Again, they're the A3, A equations, just for our example, they're uh, AM modulated. Again, all standard textbook Googleable stuff. All right, we'll expand a little bit more on one of these terms just to show you guys what I'm talking about. So we'll look at one of the terms here, A1 multiplied by this e to the negative j 2 pi 10 kilohertz times time. And if we apply Euler's identity, we can break it out into the cosine function and the sine function. And if we want to break it out into i and q data, this is how we would break it out into i and q. A1 times cosine 2 pi 10 kilohertz times time. The Q is negative A1 times sine 2 pi 10 kilohertz times time. A1 again is this 1 plus mu m of t. m of t is the message. Mu is the carrier percentage, so we'll make it 0.8, why not? So that's one of the terms explicitly broken out into uh, IQ terms. So basically you add all these up to get many radio stations. All right, clear as mud, good. What's this e to the j omega t this guy keeps talking about? Well, here it is here, here's the definition. Good, use good old Euler's to the uh, rescue there. So this is e to the positive j omega t, it's cosine omega plus j sine. Here's e to the negative j omega t, it's cosine and a minus sine. And for all those out there, omega is 2 pi times frequency. All right, that's slide six. Hopefully that's clear as mud to everyone. <laughs> Back to these uh, omega terms here. If we just look at this e to the j omega t by itself, what we get is a single uh, sine wave tone at omega zero. Omega zero is two pi f zero. So that's how we do a positive uh, complex signal. And this is how we do a negative one. It's just e to the negative j omega zero t. And there you see the signal up there at omega zero, negative omega zero. So that's how you make these components. They're all based upon these guys. So that's the key right there. All these guys, at the end of the day, make this complicated equation up here at the top. So when you're tuned into your SDR and you got all that waterfall displays coming in and many radio stations, this is the kind of equation, or this is the data, mathematically, of what's streaming into your uh, IQ SDR software program. And, I, and you might ask, why are you showing me this? Well, if you're interested in making the signals, as much of my videos are, this is the math of how I've been doing that. If you go back to many of my videos, you'll see in the waterfall display many radio stations coming out at the same time. And I'm doing that by using these complex signals right here. So I'm basically making this waveform in MATLAB, sending that wave file out to a vector signal generator, transmitting, in my case, on uh, 93.7 megahertz, and then using the SDR program to pick it up. So I'm telling the SDR program to tune in and it shows these three radio stations. So hopefully you guys see the radio here. Everything makes sense, hopefully. There's the uh, modulation terms for all the components. But, so when you see the 
three or two radio stations that I'm making in my previous videos, uh, this is the math of how I've been doing that. So that's how I get many radio stations uh, coming out a single transmitter. And the next few videos will cover how I've been doing pictures. If you go back to my previous videos, you also have been seeing me do pictures as well. And we'll get into that math as well. But for now, I want you guys to study these equations and get familiar with them because this is how you can create many radio signals at once. All right. This is what's called, again, IQ baseband signals. And your block diagram, as you guys have seen, this is your block diagram for all your software-defined radios out there. Uh, better software-defined radios are going to have a filter bank here, you know, to suppress strong signals. So, if you look at other videos where they have the SDR dongles and they actually want to use it for something, they'll often have some bandpass filter here to just focus in on what they want. So the aircraft guys that want to do the ADS-B often will put a 1090 megahertz uh, filter here in front of this LNA. But this is the architecture of all most software-defined radios. Your RTLs, Hack RFs, they're all using this. At the end of the day, you got IQ data here that's streaming into the uh, into your software to, for processing. So I just wanted to go through the example with you guys to show you how three radio stations um, get beat down. So. This is the frequencies that are really are streaming into your software radio. Now it shows you the radio station so that you know what you're tuning to. But the actual frequencies that the software radio is working with are these guys. And again, that's just simple the math. It's just 1000 minus all these guys because the 1000 is where we uh, tuned our SDR radio to. So that's what we mean by the one station's at DC, because 1,000 minus 1,000. The other station's at 20 kilohertz, because it's 1020 minus 1,000. And the other guy's at minus 10 kilohertz, because it's 990 minus 1,000. So this all here is what's called uh, baseband spectrum. All right. And let me just end with the math here, because this is... Uh, this is the real takeaway for you guys. If you guys want to start getting serious about making these signals yourself, this is the kind of equations that you need to get familiar with if you want to start transmitting many signals at once. And this is the secret to so many things, Wi-Fi, everything else. It's all based on these complex phasers. Okay, I hope you learned something. If you didn't, well, sit back, enjoy a nice glass of beer, or a pitcher of beer in my case. <laughs> okay, folks, thanks for watching.